Hello, Wanda here. I am going to do a B that I've done before. It was very popular, so I thought I'd do it again with you. A little different than the one that I've done previously. Um, you can go ahead and sketch a B silhouette out on your rock. And, um, and we're going to do like a lacy wing. So I have some nail foils here since I'm the foiling rock lady. Uh, we're going to do a pretty floral here. I like this one. I thought that'd be pretty wing. And then for the bee body, it's going to be black with this guy on top of it, which will make it look sort of velvety. And for the gold bee stripes, we'll be using the velvety gold. So it'll be really cool, really fun. I think it's really easy. This was one of the first um, foil rocks that I ever made. And it came out pretty nice. So what I'm going to do first to save time is use the Posca to get my lines down. So we'll just go around your rock and do your lining. And I will show you the spots to fill in with your black. So this is filled in the legs, the bee body here. And then this is gold. So this will be gold, black, gold, black, gold, black, gold, black. And the end will be gold. And uh, leg parts will be black. And then for the wings, we're going to do a wash of black. Um, and that's a, you know, we can just do that real quick. So you just want a paintbrush that's small but fluffy. It's a round, fluffy, natural bristle. Um, get it wet. Put uh, some excess water, not too, too much, in your well. Just a dab of black in there. So you're basically making an inky pool of tinted water, kind of like a watercolor. You see how thin that is? Okay. And that's what we're going to do on our wing here. We just want to give it, it want, we want it to be see-through or transparent. So just give it that appearance of, you know, that uh, sort of gray wing look. And when you're doing the B, if you're using a dark rock, you might want to lighten it up a bit. You know, use like a white and make it f foggy looking. But since my rock is kind of medium color, it obviously gets dark when it's wet. I need some more water. It's a little dark. Okay. My rock has a lot of black spots that are not noticeable until you get it wet. I think it's pretty cool. Sort of wing looking. Here, I'll put a little dot of plain water on there so you can see. See the black spots. Pretty cool. So this just accents that. Kind of a marble granite look. This is a Colorado River rock. It's a very big rock. Very heavy. But I like this bee on a big rock. I'm all about big rocks anyway, so. <laughs> Let's see, I'll get a measurement for you. So I've got, oh, let's do inches here. Uh, just over six, about six and a quarter inches wide. And about, actually about six inches so it's just almost the same. It's not as quite a square rock, but 
I like this rock because it will display nice. It'll make a nice gift. So you can put it in a nice uh, display. Okay, we'll let those wings dry. While those are drying, go ahead and do your lining all the way around and then paint in your black parts. Okay, and I'm gonna pause and I'll uh, see you back here when we're ready to start foiling. Hello, I thought I'd go ahead and do some painting with you. It's too quiet. <laughs> All right, so I'm just filling in my little bee parts, the legs and antennae, or antenna, antennae. Um, I lined the wings and filled in the head. And really, you don't have to be super, super detailed about this because everybody knows our arms and legs are all different. Usually, they're different lengths, different sizes, widths, thicknesses, you know. Bee parts are probably similar. I don't know any bees personally, but I'm thinking Mother Nature is like that. Okay, so on the bigger parts, you can just take your, this is Apple Barrel Jet Black Matte Paint and fill in those larger sections so you don't burn out your Posca pen. 1MR Black Uni Posca. I've just discovered those and though they weren't lost, I wasn't a pen person and I'm um, slowly being won over. It sure does save a lot of time. And it makes lining a heck of a lot easier. And I'm all about easy. Make it easy. It's still beautiful and it is still art. And don't let anybody tell you any different. If you can't draw, don't trace. It's still art. Give it your own flair. So in this section... It's black. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in too. I think I'm going to swap up brushes here. This is an off brand. It's actually a nail brush. It's a, um, like a nail building brush, I guess, when you're building like a gel nail. And this paints really nicely and holds good form. I do believe this brush came with a um, a set of chrome powder and the chrome powder came with a black gel nail color and it came in a little pot and this is what you apply the nail polish with so it's a multi-use brush but I've seen these used also to build the gel nail base Just make sure you rinse it really well. Get all that paint out of it so it doesn't get built up in there. And it's a synthetic fiber, so you can use alcohol. If your paint does get built up in there, you can use alcohol to break it down. Okay, and then where I put the black dots is where I'm going to fill in my black stripes, my little black bee body stripes. See, it gets that business done fast, huh? Okay. 
and do that and then touch up with the Posca liner. Okay. And I'm just going to align my body part. <laughs> what would this be? What are the B parts called? Torso? Uh, I don't know. And we're going to be foiling over the entire bee minus the legs and antennae. So you do not have to worry about, you know, the paint inside here. This area you want to be careful with because it, you will see through it to the rock. So try not to get any big blobs of paint in your wing area. And then just straighten up your lines because that is the base under your, this will be the color for it because we're putting a transparent foil on top of it to give it that velvety black look. There are black foils and I do have some. I just don't trust them. I've never had good luck with black foil. And I recently, a friend helped me um, figure out how to make it work but I don't want to experiment today. <laughs> you know, these are, these are nail products, so if you're having trouble getting a foil to work, usually when you buy a set of nail foils with glue, and it'll come with a top coat and a base coat, uh, when you buy them in the sets, when you get the nail art foil glue, top coat, and UV base coat, Stick on that base coat. Coat your area that you're foiling with the base coat. Cure it. Do one cycle in the cure, depending on your light. Anyways, mine's about one cycle. And then um, put on your glue following the base coat. Cure that for a cycle. Then put on your foil. And then you can use top coat or go about, you know, with your resin or whatever it was you were going to do. But that base coat sh makes a difference. You know, it's probably common sense. It's made to work with the glue and the polishes. So it ad really gets that glue to do its job.
Okay, I'm gonna pause and work out my lines and some touch-ups and then I'll be showing you where to put your glue and start your foils. Okay, so for glue, my recommendations are Mac Art Nail Art Foil Glue or SXC Nail Art Foil Glue. This one's a bit less expensive, about half the cost. Um, I can't tell a real difference except for this one has a stronger odor. So if you have issues with odor, this is probably not for you. Um, they're the only two that I really, really um, trust on my rocks. Not that I've tried every single nail art foil glue out there but I've tried a lot and these two really are consistent so I'm going to be using a combination of lights I have a torch light here this is a 12 volt UV LED I have Beetle's 84 watt large lamp has three settings 30 60 and 120 and I also have the Mac art 6 watt mini LED UV light that I use. I used to only use this one, but I recently got the Beatles light and it works. You got to be careful with the higher settings because um, sometimes it's too much. Get in there. Uh oh. Okay. Anyways, make sure everything's plugged in and ready to go so you're not looking for it when you are ready to foil so I'm going to start with our wings and I need to get my foil ready so what you want to do is cut out not cut out cut off a section so you're not fighting with your foil when your glue is ready because when the glue is ready you just want to work it out okay I got glue on my scissors so they stick to my foil. It's better if you have clean, sharp little scissors to do your work. <laughs> oh, I just got a new pair I forgot. I got a Cricut and they came with a cool pair of little scissors. I will be in the future, as soon as I learn how to use the Cricut, um, be showing you how to use the vinyl decals uh, to paint and do foils okay so I got my wings cut out I'm gonna use this from the bottle for a minute not for the whole thing just for the bigger center areas where there's a lot of space to cover this takes a lot of glue on these wings so I'm just gonna spread it out And then I'll go back with my brush, my eyeliner, disposable eyeliner brushes. Those are from Amazon. You get those about a hundred to a pack for six bucks, seven bucks, something like that. You can just search disposable eyeliner brush and it'll pop right up for you. There's no certain brand. I have ordered several different ones. Actually, that worked out. I don't think I need the highlighter brush. Cool. Just making sure it's nice and ready. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my mini one. Move all your glue out of the way of the light and give it a cycle. And I'm going to go ahead and get my other foils ready while we're working on that. Okay, that's ready. Sorry for the bounce there. I touched that camera arm. Okay, so this foil has like a honeycomb in there. Isn't that great? I think it's beautiful. I'm just going to lay it in here. Flat. I'm going to get my silicone brush tool make sure it lays down nice around the edges 
you don't really want to get your nail in there and do scratches because foils will scratch. Don't lift your foil either until you are absolutely certain you're ready to do that. You can't really readjust the foil unless it's a non-pattern. Okay, when you take this up, since it's a pattern, you want to go real slow. And make sure that it's laid down. Oop, my glue didn't cure down there. Since it's a transparent, you can hit it with, you can stick it back under your lamp or hit it with your torch. Just make sure that glue is cured. It will cure through the paper, the foil. Way better. Okay. Still want to make sure all those places stick. Okay, I'm going to turn it this way so maybe you can see. Can you see those spots left on there like right here? You want to push those back in. Mush them in there. My rock is bumpy so the places that you see like that are from the bumps in the rock. And the silicone tool is soft so it'll stick them down in there and it won't scratch the foil. If you have trouble getting it to lay down in those holes, like your extra bumpy rock, see this spot right here? You can take very gently the ball on your nail dotting tool and shove it in there. But I'm talking gently, don't be drawn on it because it will scratch your foil. And you don't, you don't want to scratch your foil after all that hard work, do you? No, I don't. Okay, pretty close. We do have some left on there, but it looks pretty good. Look at that. Oh, guys, gorgeous. Those are some pretty bee wings. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing over here. Just apply your glue, do your cycle, and then apply your foil. And then from there, we're going to move on to our black parts and use our transparent foil to give it the velvet look. And I'll be back for that. Okay, let's do the black parts next. Same thing, just fill in your area with your nail art foil glue. And I'm using SXC. I am going to get my a liner, eyeliner brush, disposable eyeliner brush. I'm going to pour some of this into my well and use it from there. Get a fresh brush, nice and pointy. And get around my edges. Now because my rock is bumpy, it'll probably be jaggedy looking when I take off the foil. And that's when you go back in and do your liner again and it'll look golden.
Okay, nice even coat of glue. I'm gonna let that go for a cycle. Move my glue out of the way. Okay, my light shut off. Going to get my foil. This is a transparent, I call it transparent faceted foil. Not that I've ever seen it called that when I buy it, but that's how it looks to me. So that's how I identify it. It usually is a um, holographic foil sold as clear holographic foil. This set you can get on Amazon three packs for the price of one, which is amazing. I go through this the most. It comes, I'm already out of two of them. But anyways, you get ten, obviously, different facets of this foil that makes magic. <laughs> and that three pack is like $7 or something really inexpensive. I just want to make sure it gets in those bumpies. I'm going to get a bigger ball so it's softer here. Try to get it in there. Pretty. Oh, I love it. Now, most of the, like, there's like a scratch there and a pit there. That'll all disappear when you do your top coat resin. Mr. Resin, which is what I'll, I don't know. It's a big rock. I might do regular resin. But I won't be doing that on this one today. We don't, I don't have that much time. But, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the next part here. with my glue. Now mind your lines. I'm going to leave an area there around my wing so my lines will be visible. Bubbles aren't your friend, so try not to go too fast because that creates bubbles. The bumpier the rock, the more glue I use. So it helps to fill in my bumps. If you do get bubbles, they don't really pop, so pull them to the edge. like that right there. Okay, move your glue out of the way and do your cure. Okay, 
Okay. I'm going to do these black stripes here. These are bubbles in my bowl. No, no. So it's basically the same thing all the way around your bee. I will not be doing the legs or the antenna. Those will stay pure black. But I am going to do these stripes all at the same time. Bubble. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so I'm going to work with this and then cure it, and then I'll come back and show you how I do the whole section. Okay, so for this one, because I'm doing more than, or I'm doing the whole stripes at the same time, I did two with one foil. Now I'm going to do the other two with this one. That way there's no separation. Some people go side to side, but then there's a definite line down the center so we don't need to do that I think this bee would be beautiful on a Santorini. And I think I'm going to do one on Santorini too soon. Beautiful. Great transfer. Okay, hey, when you're done with your foils, see all that leftover? Save them. Save them and put them in. <laughs> this is a used remnant and damaged foils jar. This thing is loaded full. So when I'm doing projects with like random foils, yep, I just reach in here and start pulling out foils. It's a good way to keep your old foils and be a little more eco-friendly. You know, use up what you got Okay, gold bits coming up. I'm going to do the stripes with in gold. And that'll be these here. It's going to be really pretty. And then I'll use some gold, Folk Art Treasure Gold 3081E to do touch-ups around the gold in line. And yes, you saw that I dripped a little bit on, <laughs> on my black bee body part. So let's see how I save that, huh? <laughs> okay, actually, I think I'm going to use the torch. Might not have been a good choice. I think this torch is really strong. Anyways, you can see how it bubbled up the glue there. 
see the bubbles in it yeah that's when your light is too strong sometimes it does that probably not a good thing on here I'm gonna do another a second glue and go ahead and use my little mini watt light I'm gonna try to get those bumps out of it if you see that your glue bubbled up like that you can do a second coat of glue right on top of it that's gonna look good okay keep your fingers crossed I'm gonna go back to the Mac art it's very mild light and it works beautifully I don't know why I chose to use the torch <laughs> okay fingers crossed this is full metallic foil these are sometimes temperamental you really, really want to make sure that it's down before you take it up. They usually will show every little bubble, every little thing. So see where I did my spill over there? I will do some black liner. Touch that up. On the black part. And then when that's dry, I will go back around that and probably line it in the gold. All right, I'm gonna line and do the same thing here with these parts with the gold. And be more careful not to drip. <laughs> okay, so I got the gold done in there. Now I'm touching up here with the Posca. Just redefine in my black. Oh, sorry. I did it again. <laughs> out of camera or out of view. Sorry. Okay. I was just touching up. It wasn't very important. Okay. So from here, I should stop and be finished, but you know me. Gotta go overboard. So I'm going to take my very yummy treasure gold and touch up a line around my gold B stripes
basically I'm trying to make it a bigger fold section. So you go right to the edge of your gold and on top of your black foil. If you can see that, then that's what you want to do. Stay right above that gold. Just doing the outer parts. All right, once you've got your gold lined, you are done. So that is my bee. What should we call it? Honeycomb, honeycomb wing floral bee. <laughs> Let's call it holographic honeycomb wing. How about just B. All right. Thank you. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please hit the like. Also subscribe as soon as it's going to take a while, but as soon as we hit 10,000, we can go live and I will go live as often as you guys ask. I like going live. Speaking of, I will be live tonight on Facebook, 7 p.m. Central. That is um, December 29th, 2020. So if it's past that, obviously we're not doing it. Um, anyways, I'll be live answering questions and I will try to up that, upload that here on YouTube if I can get it edited soon. Anyways, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Don't forget to sign your work. Later.